Homeland Security folks, uh, the Department of Defense and others have uh, expressed an interest in being able to more closely monitor the U.S. populace. And one way to do that, of course, would be being able to determine who buys what and uh, where they take those things. Radio waves can travel through walls, they can travel through wood, they can travel through the things we normally rely on to protect our privacy. Everything you do is tied down to a single number and there is no longer the ability to pay with cash. Then all it takes to render you a non-citizen is to simply turn that chip off. You will no longer be able to really participate in any function in society, including by food. This is absolutely Orwellian. I mean, it's talking about Big Brother looking over your shoulder at absolutely everything you do, every purchase you make, every place you go, um, every company you interact with, all of that would be reported back potentially to the government. In the new legislation, the, the national ID card is in it. It takes three or four pages to describe, and it will be connected with our driver's licenses. The states will be instructed on exactly what they have to do. Social security numbers will be used. Some type of a physical proof, such as fingerprints or retinal prints, have to be on it. A New Jersey policeman says he's alive today thanks to a medical ID chip implanted in his arm. Verichip is the size of a grain of rice. Sergeant William Koretsky got one to alert and doctors he's diabetic. Recently, he was seriously hurt when his squad car crashed during a pursuit. Verichip apparently allowed ER doctors to see his full medical record in minutes. I couldn't answer all their questions fully. He just couldn't do it. And, but they had all the information right there in front of them. Very chip is not available in Chicago yet, but and Blue Cross of New Jersey is conducting a two-year study offering very chip to patients with chronic illnesses. I'm getting my first tattoo. Is this easy enough that I could do it myself? Yeah, sure. That, that would be the idea. It's a circuit board so thin that it can stick on my skin. This one's a prototype, but soon they'll be able to wirelessly monitor my health. I have like a circuit board on my you hand right now. have a circuit board on your arm right now. Oh, yeah. wow. It's really in there. We've figured out ways to uh, reformat silicon in ways that uh, allow us to build circuits that, that stretch and deform almost like a, uh, a rubber band or, or a piece of latex. So it's very squiggly and curvy. It's also John Rogers is an engineering professor at the University of Illinois and the man leading a revolution in electronics. There's something very freaky about knowing that you're wearing a patch that can monitor you, something almost a little big brotherish about it. I think uh, you know, the vast majority of folks out there will realize it's no different than carrying a Blackberry in your pocket. It just happens to be on, on your skin. But there's a reason we carry cell phones in our pockets. Like most electronics, they're built on rigid silicon wafers. Was there a specific breakthrough which made you realize, you know what, we can actually bend this? And you can think about it in the context of a, uh, of a two by four. If you take wood and you create it in a thin form, essentially a sheet of paper, uh, then that wood becomes very bendable because this sheet of paper is just much, much thinner than, than the two by four. So what we figured out how to do is take a silicon wafer like that and slice off the near surface region, extremely thin platelets, membranes of silicon. But the problem is you now have something that's very bendable but still pretty stiff. Right, right. So that led to a second breakthrough. Thin and wavy is stretchable. So if you take that sheet of paper and you fold it into these cleats, then you can achieve an end-to-end -end dimensional change um, without ripping the paper. Uh, and that's, in fact, what we do with silicon. The technology inspired Rogers to make a string of inventions, including a camera lens curved like the human eye. So is this the new face of electronics? I want to talk about the cost effectiveness for a second. Is printing a sheet of bendable, stretchy electronics right now more expensive or less expensive than a semiconductor chip? Well, it's a little bit more expensive uh, because it requires a few additional steps. So how will this technology compete? It's a $300 billion industry. David Icke is the CEO of MC10, the company that owns the patents for Rogers Technology. We think we'll be able to accelerate the growth of that industry by deploying electronics in new places. Really, electronics anywhere is what we're after. But first, MC10 has to invest in making Rogers semiconductors work in industrial conditions. And 
As a startup, the company has to be strategic about what inventions it develops. It's important for us to get a few iconic examples of how thin conformal electronics can be used uh, out in the marketplace so that people are aware of what the technology can do. Ike chose this balloon catheter that can stick electronic wiring inside the chambers of the heart. And the tattoo, which is being developed with Reebok as a top secret sports monitor. So it might look crazy, but we could all be wearing these to the gym soon enough. Oh, what about the brain and IT? I'm interested in bio-digital worlds. We have uh, not only the capacity, I think, uh, in the future to produce a camera with the resolution of the human eye. Uh, by the way, it could be a bio-camera. Uh, one of the things, we already have the capacity to regrow retinal cells at the back of the eye of someone who's gone blind. And these cells automatically connect to the optic nerve so an animal can see again. Astonishing. Now I'm talking about something else. I'm talking about the fusion of digital and bio worlds. I'm talking about these brain cells, which you can see here, growing on the surface of a computer chip. Brain cells are intelligent, and they recognize other intelligence. And brain cells automatically connect to computer chips. They need no teaching, they just do it. All you do is you mix brain cells in water, you float them onto the surface of chips, you sit back and relax and feed them. And if you do that, you will find quite soon that electrical signals start to be picked up by the chips. The brain cells connect not only to the chips, but they also start to put out uh, feelers to each other. They connect to each other, they connect to the chip. You get a biodigital device. I'm telling you history, my friends. You tell me the future. These devices have been grown for the last five to ten years. So, uh, could we have a human brain that can go online? This is history. We already did it in animals. We have rats and mice that can think electrically. They produce currents and thoughts which go from one mouse to another. The mouse says, I am thirsty, and a signal electronically goes to another mouse in another laboratory saying, please, can you give me a drink? Finally from us this evening, technology on the cutting edge. We were interested today to hear that more than 100 law enforcement officials in Mexico are having microchips implanted in their arms. The chips allow a person to be scanned, sort of like a cereal box at the supermarket checkout. In Mexico, this will be one more tool in the fight against crime. Here's ABC's John McKenzie. You've seen it before, right out of Hollywood. It's maybe a little uncomfortable. A microchip inside the body. A hidden high-tech identification tag. They have the access codes to your job spot. Now, Mexico's attorney general and 160 of his deputies have had microchips implanted in their arms to control access to the country's new criminal investigation center. It is to provide access, said the attorney general, to the right people in exclusive areas where there is valuable, sensitive information. The microchip, the size of a grain of rice, is injected under the skin and gives off a low-frequency radio wave. A scanner reads each chip's identification number to verify an official's security clearance. The microchip is tamper-proof, it's secure, no one can take your microchip and use it to their advantage to gain access to your facility. The chip, developed by Applied Digital Solutions, is similar to those used in the U.S. to identify and return runaway dogs. In humans, it can have several uses. Little stick. The chips can also be programmed to carry medical information. The one in this patient details his blood type, allergies, and the fact he has Alzheimer's disease. The device is now awaiting approval from the Food and Drug Administration. Hands free. The next step, say researchers, is developing an implantable chip with a global positioning system to track people miles away, whether kidnapped or lost, just as cars can now be traced. A kind of 
low jack for the body. We also need to provide a means by which we have an up-to-date electronic medical record for people to practice from. You can't get everything you need off of a clipboard if you're sitting in a waiting room completing a, a, a medical or a health history. We really need a means by which everyone populates a medical record. That medical record is transportable and it goes with you as you seek medical services. Because if you had an MRI done last week, there's no need necessarily to have another one done. So there's opportunities in the system now for us to be able to make more efficient, more effective care available under the today's current model.